29, 2013 meeting of the Human Services Committee will now come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Ancello. Ms. Andrews. Here. Dr. Carbone. Here. Mr. Daniele. Here. Chairwoman Draw. Here. Ms. Cayley. Here. Mr. Lightfoot is excused. Dr. Quattro. Here. Mrs. Valerio. Thank you. And at this time, I would just like to welcome Dr. Joe Carbone uh, to our Human Services Committee. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. And also at this time, I think uh, since you may not know some of the people around the table, the administration table, maybe it would be a nice idea if you would all um, introduce yourself this evening. Thank you. Madam Chair, I'm Jerry Helfer, Assistant County Executive. Brett Granville, Law Department. Good evening, Madam Chair. Bob Franklin, Department of Finance. Is there anyone signed up to speak this evening? There is not. Okay, and no one present who would like to speak. The next uh, item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. You have before you the December 18th minutes. They'll stand approved unless the clerk is notified of any changes before the end of the day. And now going on to new business. Referral 13-4. Move moved by Legislator Quattro and seconded by Legislator Carbone. And I see that the maker of the motion, Legislator Steve Tucciarello, is here in the, in the chambers. And so I, if you would like to speak to your um, referral, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairwoman Draw. I appreciate uh, you giving me the time today to uh, introduce a local law uh, to prohibit the sale, use, possession of synthetic drugs and other similar compounds to your committee. Um, it, it's important that we, uh, we protect uh, our community and protect the youth of our community. Uh, synthetic drugs are uh, a drug that is targeted to the 13 and 29 age group, uh, an age group that uh, is in, important for us to look out for and uh, make sure that these, uh, these uh, chemical compounds and these drugs stay out of their hands and, and off of our streets. Uh, the impact of synthetic drugs uh, have been well documented, the psychosis, the long-term effects, um, and uh, they're, they're really uh, nasty, uh, nasty items that uh, uh, we wish basically weren't invented. And at this point in time, uh, I'm, I'm obviously standing in front of you with my proposal to uh, ban them and criminalize them in Monroe County. Now, we have crafted a referral uh, that's very thorough and extensive, um, something that uh, really I don't think has been done at this level. We've actually broken down our chemical uh, compounds to their various strings and uh, band them at that level and any uh, alternative to those levels. Uh, so it's a very thorough uh, scientific uh, referral. It criminalizes the substance, uh, substances with uh, up to $1,000 and a year in jail. And I uh, come before you tonight to ask for your support and the support of your committee um, so that we can uh, move forward uh, on uh, passing this uh, local law. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Legislator Tucciarello. Appreciate that. And at this time, is there any questions or discussion on this referral? Legislator Andrews. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first, I just want to commend Legislator Tucciarello uh, for his work on this effort uh, and bringing this to our attention at this point in time. I certainly think it's a, a good measure and um, perhaps will do some good in our community. And so I applaud him for that work. I know from conversation with him and others that this has been in the works for a while. And um, uh, it's important to stay diligent and keep working forward, moving the ball forward when you find something that you really want to do. So I certainly appreciate that effort very much. I do just have a couple of questions so that I can better understand what we will be voting on and what the, the effect that the law will have. So if I can just start by asking, um, and I realize some of these were probably covered last night. So I'm going to from what I was told happened last night, try not to be too repetitive, but I apologize if I am. Um, first, through the chair, it, it appears, and I understand that there was an effort here to cover substances that aren't written um, or delineated specifically by their chemical name to perhaps catch, uh, fill in some of the loopholes that some of the state regs and federal regs haven't been able to do. Can you just explain um, how you think this law accomplishes that task and if it, if it leaves any loopholes where it would still be possible for a substance to not be covered. Thank you, uh, through you, Madam Chair. Um, as I said when I uh, when I initially introduced in front of this committee, uh, we've actually taken the chemicals and not called them by their street names, uh, but broke them down to their basic 
chemical string and name the alternatives and deviations and variations on those chemical st uh, strings so that in order for someone to, to circumvent this, they would have to uh, completely come up with a, a new chemical string, uh, which is uh, not something that uh, occurs very often uh, when it comes to a, a situation like this. So uh, we've closed a lot of loopholes of, of street names by actually going right down to the basic chemistry of it. Thank you. Um, and through the chair, then, is that different than how it's been handled at the state and federal level? It is a variation on how they did it at the uh, state level. The federal level just banned specific substances by name. And the states tried to, the state level, they tried to uh, create something similar to this, but they were not successful in our eyes. And this does close that loophole. Thank you. Um, in, I think in last night's conversation, there was some, some discussion about the cost of implementing this law, and I think the referral indicates there should be no cost or no impact on the county budget. Um, could you just explain why? Through the chair. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. um, basically the implementation of this law uh, criminalizes uh, these drugs and uh, a lot of other uh, drugs are criminalized. The police are uh, on the street, they're doing their, their jobs, the crime lab is testing, uh, the jails are holding prisoners. Uh, this would all be accomplished uh, within the budgets of uh, obviously the departments uh, that would have to handle that. Thank you. So there will be additional work for them to do, but you feel that we have adequate staff on board for them currently and, and I mean in all the departments that are going to be affected by this from the from the public defender to the district attorney to the, um, the crime lab or wherever everything gets tested, you feel with we have adequate staff and this isn't actually going to increase any costs through the chair? Through you, Madam Chair. Um, we, ha we have spoke with the uh, crime lab. We've spoke with the sheriff. Uh, they understand uh, very well what we're doing here. Um, and uh, I, I am under the, the best impression that uh, uh, this will be handled within the current budgets. Thank you. And is that same thing true for the district attorney's office through the chair? The staff of the district attorney's office should not need to increase due to the nature of this OGO law. Through the chair. Through the chair, sorry. Thank you. Thank you, through the chair. Is that what they stated? We have, uh, through the chair, we have not reached out directly to the district attorney, but we have, uh, the members of our staff have reviewed this law, and having worked there for 16 years, I know how the system would work, and I spent three years prosecuting narcotic substances, so there would not need to be an increase, we would expect, because there's not a, going to be an increase in staff at the arresting stage, the sheriff, or the testing stage, therefore at the prosecution, there would not be that same needed increase, would not see an increase. Okay, thank you. Um, through the chair, just backing up a little bit to what the state had has passed or the State Department of Health has is issued, why do you feel that that has failed? The state was too vague in their definitions and they left open now where you could be penalized in the state system for possessing simple aspirin if it was tainted with a synthetic uh, cannabinoid. So the state's system is too gray and has been very vague and will be challenged for that. We've closed that loophole with our definitions. Thank you. Through the chair. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, just a question in terms of in crafting this legislation, was there any discussion or thought given to differentiating penalty based on quantity of possession? I mean. It's an issue that's come up a lot in the drug laws in the, in the country and certainly in the state. I mean, if, you, if somebody possesses one bag or box, I'm not quite sure how this, how this stuff is usually purchased, but compared to a seller or a retailer who has a, a vast quantity um, of the substances, are the, is the penalty, is it fair to have the penalty be the same? And is, is there any consideration given to differentiating those penalties? You, Madam Chair. Um, currently, this law is written for possession as a misdemeanor uh, with a maximum uh, punishment of $1,000 and a year in jail. Uh, I, I expect that this will be a, a law that um, will be living and uh, at some point in time when we get further statistics uh, and look at uh, 
the dealing portion and, and so on and so forth and possession and quantities, then we could obviously step forward uh, and uh, at that point in time uh, make harsher penalties uh, or separate them or delineate them from each other. Uh, but at this point in time, uh, until we learn more, uh, I think uh, we're at a good point right here. Thanks. Through the chair, just following up on that, I mean, there are other laws in other states that are, you know, or counties and across the country that attempt to do the same thing. And I wondered if we, if we didn't have any, my information was we didn't have a lot of research in terms of um, how, how much of these drugs are used now or what we're actually expecting to see by passing this law. Um, but I thought perhaps we could have gained some knowledge from what other areas have done to start out from the beginning in terms of finding adequate and appropriate penalties versus trying, hoping to revisit it in the future because I think a lot of these laws, once they get passed, are very difficult to, to revisit. Through the chair, six counties currently in New York State have similar laws. They have capped all their penalties the same level we have. And so that was what we started with as a model. Thank you very much. So none of them differentiate between smaller quantities and mass quantities of possession? No, through the chair, no, they do not. Okay, thank you. Um, through the chair, could you just explain a little bit how the preemption portion of this law would work? Preemption would not occur at the state level because the state has banned narcotic substances. These are not narcotic substances. These are man-made synthetic substances. Therefore, preemption doesn't apply as the state has not entered this arena. Through the chair, but if the state were to pass a law and enter this arena, then what would happen with this law? We have placed reverse preemption in this for that reason, through the chair. And so that at point in time, our law would cease and the state law would take over? Can, and that's my question. I, can you just explain what reverse preemption means? Through the chair, uh, what would happen, reverse preemption would be that if the state did enter the synthetic drug arena as a penalty, criminalizing it in essence, then yes, this law would cease to exist as being preempted. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then just lastly, in terms of this, these types of drugs, um, perhaps Legislator Tutorello, if you know or anyone else knows, do you consider these drugs to be more on par with narcotic drugs or more on par with um, perhaps other drugs like marijuana? Well, quite uh, through the Madam Chair, uh, quite frankly, these, uh, these drugs are, um, I I'm not going to classify them either way. What I'm going to basically say is that these drugs cause permanent uh, psychosis in many cases. Um, they attach themselves uh, to the brain in such a way as they, they don't let go. There's been uh, suicides and uh, you know various uh, actions that are not uh, very typical in our normal society. Um, basically, they have a very uh, uh, damaging, euphoric uh, feeling to them. So uh, not understanding uh, narcotics, um, I, I, I wouldn't be able to uh, address that question specifically, but I would think they're, they're uh, uh, in a class of their own because of the permanency uh, of the damage that they do. Thank you for that. And then just, just one other question then. Um, in terms of some of the states around the country that have moved to decriminalize marijuana, um, how, if, if an effort like that were undertaken in New York, where do you think, how do you think that would affect this law? Through the chair. Through the chair. Sorry if I didn't say that in the beginning. Th through the chair, this is a man-made substance. This is a synthetic. It's different than marijuana. Marijuana is already criminalized under Penal Law Section 221. So it would not affect this law unless the state moved to decriminalize synthetic cannabinoids. Thank you very much. Any other discussion on this? Seeing, uh, would Legislator Ticciarello like to say a few words? Again, thank you, Madam uh, Chairwoman, for uh, allowing me to be here tonight and uh, to uh, speak in front of your committee, and I would appreciate the committee's support. And I want to thank uh, uh, the work of Legislator Antelli and of uh, um, the uh, Law Department and the Crime Lab and, and putting this together. I think we have something that's uh, really special here, and I appreciate the team effort. Thank you. Can we please call a vote? Roll call. Yes. Mr. Ancello. Ms. Andrews? Yes. Dr. Carbone? Yes. Mr. Danielli? Yes. Chairwoman Draw? Yes. Ms. Cayley? Yes. Mr. Lightfoot is excused. Dr. Quattro? Yes. Mrs. Valerio? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Eight zero. Most motion passes. Thank you. Congratulations. 
Next referral. Referral 13-19, amend resolution 295. Moved by Legislator Dr. Carbone and seconded by Legislator Daniello. Okay. Is there any other discussion on this? Uh, Legislator Anders. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, through you to the administration, um, how many additional hours of service were performed by these psychiatrists in 2012? Through the chair, this is David Putney, Social Legal Programs Manager. Uh, I can get you that exact number of um, specific hours. Uh, I can tell you that the majority of this time is related to an increase in the assisted outpatient treatment law, but I can get that calculation momentarily for you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? No? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral 13-34, acceptance Move. of a grant. Moved by Legislator Valerio and seconded by Legislator Ancelo. Is there any discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Um, is there any unfinished business to come before this committee tonight? Then I see none. No further business. The January 29th, 2013 meeting of the Human Services stands adjourned until uh, Tuesday, February 26th at 6 p.m. Thank you. Have a good night.